Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you enjoy this content, I'll just say at the beginning because I always forget, please subscribe and tune in to future videos and things like that. So for this week, I thought it would be fun to talk about um, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Just talk about them all together since they all do go together. Um, mine are soft, you know, like paperback editions. They aren't hardcover or anything like that. And they all came in a set together, so they have some different, um, you know, like covers and things like that. So that's what mine look like. So I thought it would be fun to talk about those today. And um, yeah, let's just get into it like we normally do. And again, if you're new here, this is more like commentary. It's not necessarily a review. I kind of just some books I talk more in detail about what the book was, other books I just kind of talk about things I liked and didn't like, some books I talk about a combination of the two, it just kind of depends on the books and if I had more things to say about it and things like that. So it's more commentary, it's definitely not a review, just kind of talk about how I felt while reading and things like that. <laughs> so with these books, I actually am kind of late to the party. I, um, I didn't start reading these until like the last year and a half. Within the last like year and a half, I read them. So I, you know, <laughs> I'm in my later 20s. I'm going to be 26 soon. And, you know, I just read them, you know, the 24, 25 range. Like I might have started. I think I read them, started reading them after my 25th birthday. So... Um, or right before, I think it was after my 25th birthday. So, you know, it, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a little late, I know, but I did read them. So that's all that matters, I feel like. <laughs> um, I did really enjoy the books. I thought they were fun. They were, you know, interesting. It was one of my first, uh, it was one of the first times I've read like the fantasy type genre. I didn't really read fantasy before I read these. I pretty much just read nonfiction and some fiction, but it was focused on like a lot of like what my nonfiction was. It was just fiction versions <laughs> of those books. Um, which if you're wondering what that is, I read a lot about the Holocaust, which I thought about making a video, not doing my makeup while I do it, just because it just doesn't seem okay but like making a video talking about some books that i would recommend if you wanted to try reading in that genre because it is one of my favorite genres to read in um but anyways that's pretty much all i used to read um i didn't read much else every once in a while i would read you know something slightly different um, but that was pretty much all i would read so this was one of the first times that I kind of stepped into the fiction fantasy type genres and I really did enjoy it. Um, I read these before I read the Harry Potter books, which <laughs> I also am very late to the game reading those since they were really popular as a kid um, for me. So I just read those within the last year as well. So anyways, um, I really enjoyed the books um, but I did find that I couldn't read, like, a lot of material in them before I had to take a break, and it was just because, um, Tolkien's writing is so, um, detailed, and, you know, he goes into so much detail about scenery and things like that, which I think is so important, especially, you can see in the movies, you know, they tried to really incorporate like those details and making sure that you know because he provided so much information about what the scenery looked like it's easier to make a movie because you can really recreate what he's saying but because of how in depth he went um i personally just kind of struggled i was like this is so much detail um i just find myself needing to take a break from reading after a few pages because it's so much detail about 
you know, what the hills looked like and the woods here and um, just the amount of depth he went into for the scenery was a little much, which keep in mind again, this is the first time I'm writing a fantasy fiction novel. <laughs> so, you know, I wasn't used to that either. Um, so it just was a lot. So I did have to, you know, I could only read a few pages at a time and then I would have to take a break. Like, I'm not normally someone that can stop reading in the middle of a chapter, but I had to do that because I just physically could not get myself to continue reading. Um, and it just got a little distracting for me. And I found that after reading a couple of pages, I couldn't quite focus um, because of how in depth it was. Uh, so I would kind of like start to zone out. I wasn't taking in the information and I'd be like, wait, what did I just read? You know, I gotta keep up with the story. I don't want to miss stuff. Um, so I did, I did have that. Uh, but I also understand why it was like that because this is a fantasy. Um, it's a different style of writing. It's more descriptive. I can really appreciate how he was able to come up with that much detail. I mean, that's insane. I mean, he had to create his own world. All of these people that write fantasy fiction, you know, they create their own world. So I understand why they have to go into detail like that. Um, I just personally struggle with when it gets that descriptive because I... You know within i've only been reading fantasy for about a year um so i'm just not used to trying to get my mind to be able to like read it process it take it in and not get overwhelmed with all the detail um but i can still appreciate it and i mean it's just amazing how much detail he was able to go into to create this world it's just crazy to me um so i appreciate it but i just have to acknowledge that it's a little bit of a struggle for me to read <laughs> that it's a little distracting um but i really enjoyed all the books and the different journeys that we got to go on in them um so i kind of just talk about the hobbit first obviously um so I really love Bilbo's journey and the fact that like that was all in one book it was kind of crazy to me because I feel like I know a little bit more obviously happened in Frodo's journey and more things were going on because it wasn't just him trying to get the ring somewhere and transporting it. It was also, you know, wars were starting and they were prepping and doing things for that. So I understand why his book his story is broken up into three books but it just kind of shocks me that the hobbit is also only one the hobbit is only one book just because i feel like that one had you know a lot of detail and things going on as well i felt like it could have almost been broken up into two books um so it just amazes me how much he like got into one book and one story um and it was just fun to see how bilbo related to the company and how he developed throughout the story into a more daring hobbit, which did run in his family, which is just kind of fun to note. Like, this is something that runs in the family. Um, even though it's the complete opposite of like typical hobbit behavior, I just thought that was kind of a fun detail that they included in the story. Like, hobbits are typically, you know, like really. <laughs> their homebodies, they don't want to leave, they don't want to engage in risky behavior or, you know, daring, daring behavior or journeys or things like that. But for some reason, Bilbo's family is a little different and like it, they're, you know, were relatives that did travel outside of the Shire and did things and, um, you know, Bilbo seemed to be like a normal hobbit, but then he still chose to go on that journey. He had that drive and that pull. And he was able to succeed on it. You know, like he was able to do it. So that was kind of just fun to see. Um, 
It was also just fun to and different and interesting to see Bilbo's relationship to the ring once he acquired the ring. Um, because like, you could see a controlled Bilbo, you know, it's not like it had no effect on him at all, but it didn't have the same effect as it did on other people. Wasn't able to fully control and manipulate him like it did with Gollum or Schmeagol, whatever you wanna call him. Um, you know, so it just kind of showed he had a little bit stronger willpower, stronger, you know, just a little bit more of an ability to keep his mind about him and not go insane because of this object. Um, and speaking of Gollum, I really liked Gollum. <laughs> I thought that was a fun kind of like character that they included in the story and kind of, you know, I mean, he was an important character. He's in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. He plays a part, a big part in all of them. Um, and he's in the stories until the end. So um, I did like his character and just including a character like that that has a relationship with, you know, the darker side. Um, you know, it was just fun and interesting to kind of see. Um, what else did I say about him? I also thought it was interesting, I'm pretty sure, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the book does say that Gollum, it hints that he was some type of hobbit. Yes? Um, which I thought was interesting because he did have some similarities to Bilbo in terms of physical characteristics, like the feet. Um, like he had really big, you know, feet, like hobbits have really big feet. Gollum seemed to have really big feet. Um, so I just kind of thought that that was interesting. Like he's some type of early form or a different, like, oh, what do I want to say? I can't think, but he's like a different type of hobbit. Um. So that was kind of interesting to me um, and how he kind of, even though he did have some similarities like with the feet because of the ring and um, you know how long he had like hidden away to keep the ring to himself and stuff, he like physically transformed and just looked so different and how he morphed. So I thought that was... Um, just really interesting like he might have started out of as a hobbit in his life but because of his because of this ring this evil object it like transformed him and you know just kind of made it to where he physically morphed and was no longer who he started out to be physically or mentally really he mean poor the poor guy it's kind of on the struggle bus <laughs> um i also thought in the habit it was kind of sad that they ended up killing off thorin which i know i'm kind of like jumping you know a lot and like jumping far ahead but there's so much in these books i can't possibly like comment on everything there's just too much um <laughs> So I was kind of commenting on things that, you know, I'm remembering that really stood out to me. So anyways, um, I just thought it was sad that they ended up killing off Thorin after everything he went through to get back his family's mountain and the treasure um, to then be killed so he can't even like sit on the throne like he was supposed to. I just thought it was kind of sad. Um, you know, I mean, he waited how many years to be able to you know go on this journey and then they finally succeed and get all the way over there and then he doesn't even get the throne <laughs> like it's just like no nope, sorry but he did get a full character arc and development going from only having this goal of getting the throne to then obtaining it and becoming greedy and paranoid like what had happened to his father and grandfather with all of their 
treasure that they had. Um, you know, having that paranoia and not wanting to help others and just hide away in the mountain. To then wanting to share his wealth and help others in need. Um, because he finally realized that he was letting the treasure manipulate him the way it did his, you know, predecessors. Um, so I just thought that that, at least he got that character development and that arc. I thought that was nice at least. Like, okay, you're going to kill him off, but at least you let him kind of come full circle with his development and not just be like this, um, Kind of one dimensional like all he had was this goal and he got it and then he went crazy and that's <laughs> that you know what i mean <laughs> so at least we did get to see that um and i also enjoyed the movies i know some people especially for the habit movies they're kind of like it seems that people don't like them for some reason i don't quite know why I actually watched the Hobbit movies before I read the book um, because I was planning on reading the books but I didn't have them yet and my husband wanted to watch the movies because he'd seen them before you know it's not like he had seen all of them he hasn't um, read them my husband's not a huge reader he likes to read like Louis L'Amour <laughs> books um, which are not my cup of tea <laughs> um, but that's about it so he's not a huge reader but he had seen the book movies before and he wanted to watch them and he knew i was planning on reading the books which i normally don't watch the movies prior to reading books but i knew i was going to anyways so i was just like yeah that's fine let's just watch them because he wanted to so i actually watched the movies before i read the books and i thought it was um you know i thought they were good i remember when i was reading though i would be like didn't that happen differently in the movies or they totally skipped that in the movie and you know having like little revo revelations like that or whatever but um I enjoyed it I guess I would like to know if you guys enjoyed the Hobbit movies I know I don't know I've just heard and seen things online that a lot of people don't seem to enjoy the Hobbit movies um I'm not sure why I thought they were <laughs> I thought it was really good <laughs> um but anyways so I wanted to throw that in there. Um, I just thought they did a good job with the scenery and like, you know, they did include a lot of stuff from the books because they made th yeah, three, what, like three or four hour long movies. I mean, they really, they pushed the limit, you know, to see, well, do we think people are going to like actually stick around and watch these? And they do. So, you know, they took a risk and it paid off for people you know because people that really like these movies and stuff they wanted to see all of the content and you know think people that really like the books and stuff and then you know your favorite parts get cut out kind of a situation like this where the um they decide to make multiple movies to include all the content it's kind of fun so <laughs> Um, my camera's gonna switch so I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't know. I like the movies Whatever um, Let's see and then I kind of just get into the Lord of the Rings here um, So I like that Bilbo was still a part of this story um, You know like he's still in the books and you know Yeah, he's still there. He's still kicking he's quite spry for his age he also has lived longer than the average hobbit hobbits do live for a long time but he's still alive and he's very spry that's the only word i can think of and he has his nephew frodo living with him um so he's not living alone or anything like that anymore um, and I also enjoyed knowing he still does have a good relationship with the elves, um, Bilbo. I just thought that was kind of like fun to know that he's still friends with some of the elves and he goes and visits and stays with them and things like that at times. And then in the story, obviously, like when Frodo is about to have to go on this journey, Bilbo was planning on going to visit and stay with the elves basically until 
he's gone, like he passes. Um, so he, you know, disappeared, does his disappearing. He goes and stays with the elves for the rest of the story. Um, and then he leaves with them to that other world because they know that they're not going to be able to exist in their world anymore. That part was a little confusing for me. I didn't fully understand, I don't think. Um, but anyways, so, you know, he left to do that. And that kind of wraps up Bilbo's whole story, like, you know. Um, anywho. I also thought it was interesting and, in, you know, that we got to watch Bilbo struggle a little bit with handing the ring over. So, you know, he planned, he planned on giving the ring to Frodo and he does end up doing it, but he did struggle with it a little bit and didn't want to hand it over and had gotten a little, like, aggressive for a second during that process. Um, So you could see it had a hold on him and it was controlling him and Bilbo had had it for a long time at this point but what I thought was interesting was just like I kind of mentioned earlier for during The Hobbit, even though Bilbo has had the ring for so long at this point, um, anyone else that would have had it for that long would struggle way more than Bilbo did to get rid of it and probably wouldn't even attempt to get rid of the ring. So the fact that Bilbo struggled a little bit is expected, but the fact that he still was able to like overcome that and hand the ring over just showed how strong like mentally he really was because he was able to get past that controlling that the ring was trying to do and just hand it over. Um, so I, I kind of liked, I just like that. I just feel like it shows the the strength of Bilbo. I just, I thought that was an interesting thing to include in the books and to show and like represent. Um, kind of shows his resilience and things like that. Um, I did like that, you know, we got to see Frodo's journey, but unlike Bilbo's, Frodo had friends that tagged along that were like, you're not doing this without us. Um, and everything like that so they you know tagged along so um, that was his company because he didn't start off knowing other people and like having other people tag along like it was just him and his few habit friends um, so I, I just kind of liked that you know that you know, the story is a little different. So instead of there being a company right from the beginning, they kind of form their own company and there's four hobbits. I'm just trying to remember how many of them there were. You know, four hobbits that have enough backbone to decide to go on this journey to destroy this ring that needs to be destroyed because it's it will cause, you know, the, their world to end if the enemy ends up getting it back like he wants. Um, so I just like that. They kind of formed their own company. They didn't start off with, you know, a whole bunch of people already, you know, ready to go on this journey and things like that. And I also just want to say Sam is the true hero of this story. Um, I feel like there's quite a few people that agree with me on this. Um, Sam was able to resist the ring's temptations and help Frodo to, in the end, destroy the ring, which Frodo could not have done that without him. First of all, Frodo was like not even able to physically keep going on this journey. Like he was, he was struggling even when Sam was like giving him their last bits of food and water and. Sam was wearing the ring a little bit to try and like, <laughs> you know, ease Frodo's struggles and things like that. And, you know, Frodo is still struggling. And Sam's just like pushing through, like, I got this, we're gonna succeed, whatever. Sam is a true hero. 
Uh, Frodo would never, in my opinion, have been able to complete that journey without Sam. He wouldn't have been able to give up the ring. It had a huge, strong um, hold on Frodo by the end. It also just kind of shows the difference. I feel like a piece of dry skin right here. Go away. It also just shows the difference between Frodo and Bilbo. Like, Bilbo had the ring for how long and it didn't have quite that pull on him and he had it for way longer. And then, you know, Bilbo, yeah. And then Frodo has it, but not even for near as long. And he's like on the struggle bus <laughs> um, trying to do this journey and you know get rid of the ring and things like that so i just kind of thought it was interesting the differences between those two and how you know how that how their journeys differed and things like that um that's all about sam Um, I just mentioned that too. Um, thankfully though, even though the ring had like a way stronger hold on Frodo, um, thankfully, you know, Gollum does show up to kind of save the day <laughs> in a weird way. Um, you know, Gollum shows up and he wants the ring so desperately, it still has such a hold on him that it ends up causing the ring's destruction because he you know, falls into the lava that they needed to put the ring in to destroy it. Um, so just kind of, you know, I liked that. I like that, you know, Gollum, Gollum's with the ring until the end. It just kind of seemed like that was how it needed to end. Like Gollum wouldn't be able to survive without it. Honestly, it's surprising that Gollum was even still alive because he had had the ring for so long that you would think that, you know, Bilbo having the ring for that long, that Gollum would have died during that time because he didn't have the ring to like keep him alive. So it's kind of interesting that Gollum was even still living to begin with, in my opinion, because I thought, you know, Bilbo kind of went downhill rather quickly once he gave up the ring like he he didn't have the same you know like he he started to go downhill physically once he gave up the ring so it was just kind of interesting that Gollum who had had it for so long you know was able to still somehow be living after Bilbo had the ring for so long and you know, was able to chase Frodo and Sam all this way, and we'll lead them for a little bit of the journey, but basically chase them all this way to, you know, their destination, Mordor or whatever. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy to me that he was still alive, basically, is the gist of what I'm trying to say. Because you would think he would be gone by this point because he didn't have the ring to keep him alive. So it just kind of showed, it just shows the pull it had on him and that even without having it, he was planning on living until he could get it back. So it was just kind of like poetic that Gollum goes down with the ring. Like he had it for so long, he deserved to have it in its end time as well. Um, you know, it was gonna be his forever and he gets it forever. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I also just thought the Lord of the Rings, what was fun about that was we got to see even more like landscape and more of the country that they live in and things like that. Um, because they seemed, they traveled further in a different, and like in a different way. So in The Hobbit, you get to see a lot of, you know, the country and the land and things like that but not to the same extent as in the lord of the rings we get to see way more um areas that people live in in the lord of the rings so I just kind of thought that that was kind of fun um to see and also again just 
props to Tolkien for being able to even come up with all of this stuff. Um, you know, and create all of this stuff is just amazing. Um, I would never be able to do that. <laughs> um, we also get to see more battles, obviously, in The Lord of the Rings. Um, because it's more about war in this series than in The Hobbit. Um, and we get to see, like, way more groups, um, like, way more groups of individuals that live in this, you know. I'm just gonna call it a country, because I don't know what else you would call it. Um, but you get to see way more groups of people. So there's the Hobbits and the Elves, but then there's also, like, humans, and, like, you get to see all of these different characters and things like that. Um, and then obviously you have all the battles because they're trying to make sure that the darkness doesn't win. Um, and he still did do a lot of scenery description, obviously, in The Lord of the Rings. But I feel like instead of doing all of the in-depth descriptions of the scenery like he did in The Hobbit, it felt like Tolkien kind of switched and did more in-depth work on the battles and character interactions instead of describing the scenery in such an in-depth way like I mean we definitely still got a lot of scenery description but to me it just felt like he chose to focus more on we're going to describe the you know the battles and some of these characters and their interactions together more than we're going to describe um you know like the forest they're walking through at the moment or the hills that they're, you know, walking through or whatever. It just felt like he kind of, he kind of just flipped it a little bit just to be able to describe more of what was going on for the characters instead of just the scenery and things like that. Um, but there was also a lot more to cover in The Lord of the Rings because it expanded, well, it, it spanned over three books instead of just the one. Um, and they traveled a lot further and, you know, there's a lot more characters and things like that in this, you know, a lot more different groups of beings and, you know, so he had, he had more to describe in this. <laughs> so he couldn't just like, oh, got some on my eye. Um, he couldn't just stick with the super in-depth scenery descriptions because he had more to describe for other, other parts of the story this time. Um, so that was just kind of interesting to see, you know, he still did his same like in-depth style writing, but he just had to kind of switch up the target and the focal point for it because he knew he was writing a longer story. Um, I also just going back to Bilbo and you know he goes to stay with the elves and um, you know that's who he ends his story with it was just kind of nice to see that Bilbo got like a peaceful ending in my opinion you know he just had a peaceful ending which I just thought was really nice um he gets to go off with the elves to the new home where he can continue to live with them because they're no longer going to be living amongst the humans as the world is changing and you know he's just gonna get to like chill with his elf friends um I just thought that that was it was just nice to have a a nice ending for him like he didn't just die or something like that you know like he got a peaceful a really peaceful ending um, and I just thought that that was nice to have instead of like going back to the Hobbit you know Thorin he's just killed um, whereas Bilbo gets you know a nice happy ending you can say um, so I thought that that was nice to see. It was sad, you know, like them sailing off or whatever, but it was just nice to see that. 
Mm. What else? Oh, oh, it looked like my camera did something weird. <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty much all of my thoughts. Overall, I just really enjoyed this series. I had fun reading it. I feel like it's an intense series to start reading fantasy for. <laughs> um, just because of the style of writing and the amount of detail. I feel like when you're not used to reading fantasy, it can be quite intense because... I don't know, like, of course the stories that I read in nonfiction have a lot of detail and stuff, but it's not the same extent because you're not world building. Like, you know the world they're talking about. They don't need to describe, you know, in super in-depth detail, like, the world and things like that. So, um, you know, it's just maybe a little bit of an intense fantasy series to start with to introduce yourself to fantasy but i i just really enjoyed it i thought it was fun um i really liked it i liked the way the writing was i just thought it was you know like fun to read and interesting and i felt like everything flowed really nice too like it didn't you know sometimes in certain books it just feels so like jumpy and that you're jumping around between so many things and you know this didn't feel like that it um you know it was just fun to read it just takes me uh a little bit of time to um read this series just because it's so in depth even now after well reading it one time through already um but even now after reading some other fantasy genre books, I think I would still struggle a little bit. <laughs> like, I think I still would need to um, really, oh, I think I would still need to like take my time and not be able to read like big chunks at once just because it's just so detailed. Um, but I just think it's, I think it's a fun genre i think it's a fun um series i mean you can see why it's beloved and why so many people still love it today and you know like dress up as characters for comic-con and halloween and things like that i mean you can just you can see why i mean it's an incredible series um so yeah overall i just i really enjoyed it and i had fun and i didn't read it till I was older, but I still really liked it. Um, so this is the look today. I might end up putting some um, eyeshadow like on my lower lash line, but for now we're just gonna leave it like this. So I can zoom you in and show you the eye look and then we'll be done. Spray that first. But anyways, while we wait for this to dry before I show you the makeup. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this series and when you read it, like when you guys read it, because I know a lot of people, like my brother-in-law read this, like when he was like 12, 13, you know, so a lot of people I know typically do read it around that age instead. So I would love to know when you guys read it and what you thought and what your favorite parts of it are and, things like that so yeah so this is the look i just did a green look kind of felt appropriate for like the shire you know all the greenery and things like that so it's just two different matte greens kind of a lighter and a darker on the inner and outer and then it's just a halo eye with like a um like an olivey green metallic in the center and then like a lighter green champagne type shimmer in the inner corner so that's the look. Hopefully you guys can see it well. I always, I never know. But I used um, my, some Lethal Cosmetics singles, Lethal Cosmetics, I feel like I said that weird, singles for the matte greens, which I have a video up swatching these, um, but I'll link which ones they are down below. And then I used the ABH Novu, I think it's pronounced, palette for the shimmers. I did um, Hope and Wings, the two like 
shimmery greens in the palette. So that's the look. That's the series that we talked about today. I hope you guys enjoy. And again, I would love to know your thoughts and opinions down below. And I will see you guys in a couple weeks with the next book video. Thanks. Bye.